Hello everybody and welcome to the Wattpad Book Club. I am your host, Phoenix, and today I'm joined once again by Coda. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> and uh, we were, after we read the, Z the Zoro X Sanji ones, we're like, what's, what? because we're in a bunch of fandoms together, so why not try to find some other books, branch out, and we found this beautiful book. It's an Elliot X Reader. And what makes this thing better is that this was originally on AO3, which Coda swears by. So I do. it's going I to do. be great. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, because it looks like just a genuinely good piece of literature. So I'm like a little nervous for the tone change because we've been doing like silly stuff. So this is just like going to be like a good book. So. <laughs> This is oh, like when I read that Duncan X Reader one, where I, I swear it's like a, like a really good book. Mm. Now, it does say it's ongoing, but this thing hasn't been updated in, like, two years. Yeah. Like, almost so to the date. by art standards, um, not ongoing. <laughs> so, if they just didn't put the complete thing on, uh, that's fine. But if it, if it ends, like, on a cliffhanger, we're gonna go to AO3 and finish the book but we'll, we will read it on <laughs> If Wattpad. it's finished on AO3, I mean, we don't even know if it's done on AO3. We haven't uh, checked. Yeah, we should probably do that <laughs> at some probably. point. Probably. <laughs> Watch uh, it like they haven't written in, like, years. Yeah. They, like, abandoned the whole <laughs> fan fiction <laughs> thing. God. They did not provide a link for it. I'm gonna have to just go in and search... Maybe it's the same as the like the the t same title and I don't know if their username. Yeah, is probably. The same. But as you look that up, I shall read the synopsis for everyone. Okay, go on. With a silent. Found it. Oh. <laughs> it's not that finished. Was fast. <laughs> it, the title says hiatus. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna be mad disappointed if this is like good as shit and you can't finish it. Oh God. Yeah. But don't worry, if they do update, we'll be right here waiting for them. Yeah. We'll... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, synopsis. With a silent huff si slipping past his lips, Elliot pulled out his notebook closer to him and clicked the end of his pen, scratching its tip on the edge of the paper to get the ink flowing. Aside from the few scribbles, though, the paper was completely empty. He had brought it along in hopes that the liveliness of the saloon would offer inspiration. Yet, all of his brainstorming has been... F been nothing more than a few dull ideas bouncing around his head. He let himself get lost in thoughts, never noticing the door of the saloon opening to let a new Patreon inside, nor noticing the sudden clamor and cheering as the new face entered the building and the bustle of conversation increasing. Hi there, I don't think we met yet. I cannot wait. <laughs> Slay! Yes, I hope this is good. Elliot better use some big boy words that I, like, have to, like, sit here and, like, dissect. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to, like, if I don't have to Google at least one word, I'm gonna be a little, uh, sad. Yeah, me too. I want him to use words that I never heard of before. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, uh, would you like to start? Um, I can. Okay. Okay. Uh... Do we want to do, like, two paragraphs like last time? Yep, we can do that. Okay. Dear Mr. Whitaker, we regret to inform you that your prior literary submission has been denied by our board, board of reviewers. Positive notes were taken down over your work, which you can find on the additional paper included in the envelope, but the primary takeaway was that while your writing was enthralling, it is sadly not what our editors and, and investors are searching for at the moment. If you'd like, we'd have an online list of sister companies which you may find happily to publish you. A tired sigh escaped Elliot's lips as he, his eyes skimmed over the paper, rereading it once more in his mind. Another rejection. He wasn't sure why it even surprised him at this point. He'd spent the last year or so in the valley, taking all of his savings with him and leaving behind his rather comfortable lifestyle that had been supported by his family. Within that span of time, he'd managed to pen a short novel, something sweet and simple to get him on his feet in the literary world. It had been his hope that a whittle and fast-paced adventure story would catch the eyes of the publishers, but the result of all of his submissions has shown just the opposite. As of late, he'd begun questioning himself and his creativity repeatedly. Had the market shifted, or was he merely 
trailing behind. Did his writing lack charm, which interested valid readers? Perhaps he was far too confident in his abilities. Before his training of, before his train of thought could sink himself into self-desperation, an unfamiliar sound made his ears perk up. He, res- he strained to listen in a crease in his brow as he picked up what picked up on what appeared to be singing. He muttered, almost unsure of what he asked himself the question. Folding the letter, he tossed it aside onto his writing desk and promptly stood up, quickly walking over to the rickety window beside the beach cabin's front door. Pushing aside the tattered blinds, his eyes had to adjust to the sudden bright light which filled the room. Oh my, it can't possibly be noon already, can it? He asked aloud, peering up at the sun which seemed to be high in the sky. Turning his attention back to the beach, his eyes skimmed over the shore to find the source of the singing from mere moments ago. It couldn't have been Willie. The voice had been far too feminine. He knew it couldn't have been Leah popping by for a visit either. It hadn't sounded like her. Perhaps it was that young lady in town, the blonde. Haley, is that what he... Is what he remembered her name to be. Uh, she'd visit the beach every once in a while with a camera. Finally, his eyes laid upon an unsuspected guest, and once he saw who was there near the, the dock, he found himself with even more questions than before, for he absolutely did not recognize the woman who stood basking in the sunlight. Though there was one thing he was certain of, it was the fact that her presence enthralled him. <laughs> Despite wow. The- Man, this guy's got, like, first... What, fuck, what do they call that? Like... Love at first sight? Yeah, love at first sight syndrome right now. Yeah. Like, this is... Like, you just... <laughs> He's down bad already. Yeah. <laughs> Embarrassing. He hasn't touched a woman in forever. <laughs> <laughs> or ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that shouldn't have been that funny. <laughs> Despite it being the early weeks of spring, the clear sky and hot sun made Maria feel like it was any old summer day. Who the fuck's Maria? Is that one of the- I think it's us. Oh, okay. To be fair, it just says female right here. Yeah, I really hate when people do that and then they put a name in it, but- It'll be okay. We'll get through this together. we'll cope. (laughs) If it weren't for the freshly- budding wildflowers or the cherry blossom trees in bloom, the warm fond would have fooled her. After five days of non-stop work at her newly acquired farm with her first successful, successful harvest of parsnips, clearing land and meticulously tending for and watering crops, she was ready for a bit of a break. She was searching for an excuse to venture around town a bit more, and when she got a letter from a man named Willie inviting her to the beach, she jumped on the opportunity. She ditched the overalls, heavy gloves, and muddy boots that she'd been working in every day since she arrived for an outfit which breathed far better. A simple white blouse, denim shorts, and flat-footed sandals. All her tools had been left in the shed beside her house. The only item on her person was a small wicker basket to forage with in case she stumbled upon anything valuable in the forest on the way to and from the beach. The basket, still empty, swung back and forth as she stepped down to the shoreline with a happy wave in her, fi- in her steps. Absent-mindedly, she hummed tune. The fuck. Absent-mindedly, <laughs> the hum tune of an old favorite song slipped past her lips, and Maria assumed there was no one around to listen. In on the way, sh- on the way, she stumbled over certain lyrics or wavered in pitch occasionally. The sight of the shimmering blue sea brought a wide smile to her face. The view reminded her of home, her childhood home before having to move to Zuzu City as a teenager. Before she knew it, her senses were overtaken by what could have only been described as a marine. What? (laughs) As marine, probably just having to do with the sea and all Uh, that. You know what, that makes sense, since saying a marine. (laughs) I've been watching too much One Piece. (laughs) So like the when I wrote Marine, I thought it was just what like a like an army dude. No, we gotta get you out of out of One Piece for a little bit. Yeah, I was watching it as, as I was like waiting. Jeez. I, yeah, and fell down so good. <laughs> the scent of salt water in the air was practically tangible, and as she walked closer towards the shore, she could feel the mist of the waves dancing over her skin. 
Before she knew it, she'd reached the sand bank and sand bank, and waves pushed far up enough to just barely touch the soles of her sandals. Curiously, she gazed around, but was unable to see anyone on the shoreline nor the docks. She was able to spy a wooden cabin a little ways away, but the aged wood and overgrown foliage led her to believe it was abandoned, similar to how her own home had been before she reclaimed her grandfather's land. Not to say her small house wasn't practically decrepit, because it was, but she had some major plans in the works to rebuild and redecorate with the property to make it her own. Since this so-called Willy wasn't around to be anywhere to be seen, she set her basket down on the warm sand and reached up, grabbing her curly hair and tying it back into a lopsided knot which sat by her shoulders. Brushing a few flyaway strands away from her face, she stepped. She takes a step forward into the oncoming wave, cool seawater splashing over her feet and sent a shiver down her spine. Oh, that's wonderful, she whispered to herself. Her body eased into the cooling water with ease. After days of tinkering with rusted pipes and making and taking showers that were barely longer than five minutes with freezing water, this was her own personal heaven. She had... She had half the mind fuck. She had half the mind to strip down strip off her blouse and just dive into the water, but would but would hold back from doing so since she knew this she'd have company any minute now. For just a moment she was lost in her own peaceful world, staring off into the horizon as distant wispy clouds high up in the sky formed over the sea. Enjoying the water, lass? The surprised shriek that spilled out of Maria's mouth could likely be heard for miles as the woman practically jumped out of her skin. There was a chortle as she quickly spun on her heels, looking towards the wooden docks to see a much older man standing there with two fishing rods in hand and a bucket of bait at his feet. A ragged hat shadowed most of his face, but she was able to see his bushy, unkempt beard easily, as well as what appeared to be blue eyes glittering with amusement. Didn't mean to startle ye, he apologized through his wheezing laughter. Just like your grandpappy are. Easy to scare. Dude, this reminds me at work the other day. I was like, oh mm-hmm. shit, I forgot I have to get the dishes done before I leave. So I was like, doing the mm-hmm. muffin pan, like zoning out while just like yeah. mindlessly doing it. And I guess like mm-hmm. one of the deli people came in to put their order in, but, but it was like 7 o'clock. Like they already done yeah. that, but I guess they forgot. So she came in and she, she said, my name and it scared the shit out of me <laughs> so like i felt like i jumped like out of my skin she's God. like oh, i'm sorry i didn't mean to startle you i just need to put in the order and i'm like oh that's already done and she's like oh okay sorry thanks i'm like yeah no problem oh i'm like God. over there like shitting my pants that's oh, I, terrifying i fucking hate it when people come into the apartment so much because <laughs> it scares yeah. the shit out of me <laughs> As Maria, pounding heartbeat slowed, she quirked the eyebrow at the mention of her grandfather. You knew my... She's Spanish? <laughs> I guess so. I'm trying to remember how they were pronounced the grandmother's name in Encanto. I'm so stupid. Abuelo. Abuelo. Okay, thank you. Abuelo. Mm-hmm. Sure did, last. Sainty and I go way back. I was the one who taught him how to fish when he was... Then he and I shit. I was the one who taught him how to fish when he and Angle moved in about 50 years ago, the man nodded. The mention of her grandparents sent Santiago and Angel... I cannot do it. Santiago and Angelina. <laughs> Thank you. Brought a smile to Maria's face. So you must be Willie then, she asked with a grin. Yes, ma'am. And I must say that you got quite the sight for sore eyes. Last time I see you, you were barely bigger than an ankle biter, running around and causing chaos on the farmland, Willie re- replies, chuckling softly. How sweet, she smiled. Now, um, I don't mean to sound pushy or impatient, but was there a specific reason you invited me to the beach? Aside from just nostalgic purposes. Ah, uh, yes. Since you'd be taken over the farm, I thought you might like to learn how to fish just like your grandpap, Willie answers lifting one of the fishing rods and offering it towards her with a barely visible grin peeking through beneath his mustache. Maria couldn't help the excited smile that stretched across her face as she quickly nodded her head, grabbing her wicker basket and walking towards the dock for her lesson. The ideal chatter and music of the saloon faded into the background as Elliot absentmindedly tapped his pen on his notebook, thoughts and ideas swimming in his forefront of his mind. You know... 
I don't think drinking while brainstorming is going to help your cause, a voice behind him muttered. And an unburned haired man frowned his frowned shit. Furrowed his brow and tilted his head to look over at his friend. Leah, as much as I appreciate the concern for my creative abilities, I can assure you that half a glass of wine is not enough to in fuck, what does that say? Inebate. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Elliot replies, causing her to roll her eyes and smile. He turned his gaze back to his notebook, only for a pale hand to grab and tug it away from him. Why did you even bring your work with you today? I thought Fridays and Sundays were just for you to take it easy in the saloon, Leah questioned, narrowing her eyes to the writer. Elliot sighed, leaning back in his chair and grabbing his glass before lifting it to his lip and lips and taking a small slip. I received yet another letter of rejection today, he admitted, frowning at the dejected look which immediately settled on the sculptor's face. Oh, Elliot, I'm so sorry. I wish I could stay to cheer you up, but the deadline for my current commission is tomorrow, and there's some finishing details I wanted to carve into it, Leah sighed sadly, pushing her chair away. No worries, I would hate for you to be burdened with my own problems, my friend, he quickly reassured her. Setting the wine glass down. Go and work on your project. I will be just fine. Leah pursed her lips as she stood, crossing her arms and giving Elliot a curious look. Well, all right, but Sundays, but Sundays we're going back and there will be no notebooks or papers. Nothing. You're going to relax on Saturday, and I'll be footing the bill. Before he had a chance to disagree or argue, Leah was quickly walking out of the saloon, shouting a goodbye over her shoulder and leaving the rider disgruntled. With a silent huff slipping past his lips, Elliot pulled his note notepad closer to him and clicked the end of the pen, scratching his tip at scratching his tip at the edge of the paper to get the ink flowing. Aside from the few scribbles, though, the paper was completely empty. He had brought it along in hopes of in hopes that the liveliness of the saloon would offer inspiration. Yet all of his brainstorming had been for nothing, more than a few dull ideas bouncing around his head. He let himself get loose. Lost in his thoughts, never noticing the door of the saloon opening to let another new patron, patron inside, nor noticing the sudden clamor and cheering of a new face entering the building and the bustle of conversation increasing. Hi there, I don't think we met yet. And so the stage is set. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Alright, chapter two, first impressions. Alright. Um, since you finished off the last one, I can start this one. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Maria stared up at the saloon, puffing out a semi-anxious breath as she dusted off her blouse. After her fishing lesson with Willie, she returned home with a bucket of fresh fish, walking through the forest with the hope that she'd find some fresh greens to forage on the way there. While in the forest, she, s she met Marnie, the town rancher who lived just south of the farmland. They had a brief conversation, Marnie mentioning that she had plenty of livestock available per for purchase once the farm had coops or barns. Before leaving, she'd mentioned the saloon would likely be full on this Friday night and to drop by and say hello if Maria got the chance. So there she was hours later, cleaned up with her wicker basket filled with foraging goods in the hopes of making a good first impression to the townsfolk she's yet to meet. Pushing all of her in Anxious thoughts aside, Maria reached a hand and wrapped her fingers around the handle, turning it and pushed the door open. Immediately, a jingling bell announced her presence. A few heads looked, turned to look her way. The bartender behind the register, a blue-haired girl cleaning a glass behind the counter. A man st stood beside a big bear stash. She briefly glanced up at her before returning to what appeared to be his third mug of beer. That's shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sure is. Ah, oh, Maria, good to see you. How's the farm? She smiled upon seeing Mayor Lewis seated at a round table near the door and waved a hand, greeting both him and Marnie who were sat beside one another with their respective drinks. Hello, Mayor. The farm's doing good. I had my first harvest. I've got some parsnips here if you'd like to try, she replied with a smile, lifting her basket to show her small bounty of goods. No need, I'm doing just fine. But it's good to see you taking a break, Lewis replied, tipping his drink her way before taking a swig of what looked to be ale. Following the quick conversation, Maria went around the saloon greeting people and offering small gifts as a way to introduce herself. Dude, this is so me during 
when I first <laughs> played it. I was just like, here you go. Here's a parsnip. Here's a parsnip for you, too. <laughs> just giving random I shit absolutely, to people. I did not do that shit. Dude, I remember, I um... I, uh, I went to one of the, the one of the vending machines, and I got mm-hmm. a thing of Joja Cola, and mm-hmm. I gave it to Elliot, and he hated it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize when if you get it from the vending machine, it counts it as trash. That's fun. I think it's trash all the time. Yeah. Because you can fish it out of water, so yeah, I think I, it's just always trash. But I thought of, like, it's a fresh can, so I thought he would like it, and he was like, yeah. what the hell is this? <laughs> I don't think there's anyone who does like it. Oh, this, this, just, I need to get my thoughts together. Oh, for the audience. Apparently, home, Sam likes it. Oh, really? I googled it. Sam likes Jojo Cola. For the audience at home, me and Coda had like um, a co farm on the Switch and everything for Stardew Valley. And during one of the, the first weeks, we were fishing, and we were making fun of Shane as he was walking by. And Koda, like, coughed up, like, some trash from the, the river, and just gave it to him as he was walking. Oh my god. So we, we, like, lost it, because we were, like, making fun of him while fishing, so we yeah. threw trash at him. Oh my god. That was a good memory. It was really good. Alright, back to the <laughs> reading now. Yeah. Alrighty. The bartender and saloon owner was the man by the name of Gus, a jolly fellow who also cooked all the saloon meals. He was more than happy to receive a free parsnip from the farmer, promising to use it on a delicious dish. Along with him was Emily, who worked at the saloon and was more than ecstatic to meet Maria and make a new friend. She also happily accepted the dam- dan- daffodil from the basket. There was an attempt to speak to the man by- beside the beer statue, who Emily said was name was Shane, but he just grumbled and ignored her. <laughs> Robin was there, and Maria struck up a conversation with the carpenter before she left to dance with her husband, a scientist named Demetrius. Love that guy. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> yeah. In the next room to the saloon was a pool table with a trio of some of the town's quote-unquote younger people, Abigail, Sam, and Sebastian. Maria had seen Abigail once or twice in Pierre's shop, but had never figured out which, that she's actually his daughter. She doesn't look, at, look like Pierre at all, but she seems sweet. Maria found herself thinking curiously. Sam, Sam was the son of Jody, the older lady that Maria had run into earlier that week and he most notable traits that he loves music and his unique styled hair then there was sebastian styled in all black as he leaned against the the wall coolly and (laughs) polished a uh pulled stick he was the son of robin who'd mentioned him on her first day and although sebastian seemed slightly standoffish it wasn't in an entirely rude way like how shane had been yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just emailing. Yeah. It's it's different. <laughs> <laughs> She'd had brief conversations with Pierre, who was set at the bar. Clint, the blacksmith, who she made a mental note to visit next week because her tools needed some serious upgrading, and waved a quick hello to Willie. And finally, there was one final person to meet, who Maria was admittedly quite curious about. A handsome man sat in the corner of the saloon, scrawling into a notebook. He had long auburn hair which flowed over his shoulders, and his brows furrowed as he took what looked like notes. Screwing up her courage, she waltzed over and took a seat from across from him, setting her basket down and greeting him. Hi there, I don't think we've met yet, she said with a grin, tilting her head as she looked over at him. Dude, this reminds me of when I met Elliot for the first time <laughs> in the game. He was just like, he was like, uh, he was on the bridge right outside of the beach. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I haven't met this girl yet. And I went up there and, <laughs> <laughs> and it showed Elliot's thing. And I'm like, oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> and then I married him. I haven't, haven't met this girl yet. Dude, that's exactly what I fucking did. Oh my god. I, I just saw the long hair, so I thought it was like a really yeah. well dressed girl. And then I like talked to nope. him. And it was a dude. I'm like, all right, you're the guy I'm going to marry in this game. <laughs> 
All right, man who looks feminine, you are my new husband. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I get it, though. I, ho I totally get it. Yeah. The man looks shocked almost, his green eyes going wide as he looks up to meet her gaze. Quickly straightening up, likely upon realizing he was staring, and offered her a charming smile as he sat down his pen. No, we... I say we haven't. Are you a new resident of the town, or perhaps just a traveler wandering through? He asked curiously, his eyes twinkling with curiosity. Oh no, his <laughs> voice is hot. <laughs> she gasped in her wow. head. No, shut up. He's just any other guy. <laughs> that's the, Yeah, that's my thought process yeah. on that day. <laughs> yeah, the way that he doesn't have like a canon like voice in game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like for the sake of the story. Yeah, his candid voice is that uh like the the dinging thing. Like when you talk to the NPC and it's got like the, yeah. like the sound effects, that's his voice. <laughs> that is what he sounds like. Yes. Quickly she nodded, brushing some hair out of her eyes, which had fallen in as a result. Um, yeah, I just moved in actually. I'm the owner of the farmland to the northwest part of the valley. My name is Maria. Thought you Thought you might have liked to sh know, since you'd we'd be neighbors, fellow townsfolks. Yeah, we sure are. He chuckled softly, and Maria found herself blushing. Well, it is a pleasure to meet you, Maria. I'm Elliot. Elliot, I live on the beach, which is likely why we haven't crossed paths of as of yet. Aside from the occasional grocery trip or walk in the forest, I tend to keep to shore. In fact, I was the last person to move into the valley before you, of course. Well, I guess it's nice knowing I'm not the only odd one out. I'd always assumed everyone living in Pelican Town was deep-rooted, you know? At least that's how it was when I visited as a kid, Maria sighed, absent-mindedly tracing her fingers over the rim of the basket as she spoke. Elliot hummed at this, his eyes lighting up. Ah, did you come to this town often as a child? Mm, at the time, my family and I lived in the complete opposite side of the continent. Opposite ocean, opposite sky... Sometimes it felt like we lived on a whole other planet because it was so far. But we come to visit my Abuelo, Abuelo often, or my grandpa. He owned, what the hell does that say? Um, he owned the farm. <laughs> yeah. Which I have now inherited. I was very young at the time, though, so even if I remember parts of the town, I don't remember all the people. Maria explained, and the nostalgic smile played on her lips as she delved into her memories. I don't even recognize Mayor Lewis when he greeted me at the bus stop, and he's one of my grandfather's best friends. How intriguing. And I'd, and I'd guess... Fuck. And I guess that it's likely been an absolute treat now that you've returned to a place so significant to your childhood. Elliot hummed, and Maria quickly nodded her head at this. I hope you do not mind, but I... But could I inquire... As to what M M I googled it. It's a manaser. A manaser means. It's not a word I recognize. It's Spanish for sunrise or dawn, but it's sort of grammatically incorrect. Technically, it should be el manaser. Thank you. But the L <laughs> made it too mouthy for my abuelo abuelo's opinion. He She answered with a giggle. I must admit, I'm not well versed in Spanish, though it is a lovely language. I chose to study French during my schooling career instead. Oh? Well, Spanish is actually my first language, Maria admits with a blush, lifting a hand to scratch the back of her neck. Elliot seemed taken aback by this. I would have absolutely never guessed that English isn't your first language. You're quite fluent, he complimented, making her cheeks go red as she cast her gaze to the floorboards. Oh, you flatter me, she giggled. I didn't used to be this well versed. When I was a young teen, my English was very broken, and my accent was heavy. But years of living in the city made the accent wear off, and I put a lot of practice into my vocabulary and grammar. Had to if I wanted to be taken seriously in the workplace. Knowing Zuzu City, I presume that you worked in an office job. How was that? Awful, Maria answered immediately, pull pulling a slight laugh out of Elliot. He, he sighed and nodded his head. The smile still playing on his lips as he lifted the wine glass for a sip. I can only imagine. Up, 
Up until last year, I lived in Zuzu City my entire life, and I am more than familiar with the ways corporate world can drain one's soul. Don't I know it, Maria grumbled, a few foul memories, memories coming to the forefront of her mind as she thought back to her old job. Quickly, though, she pushed those away and turned back, uh, turned to look back at Elliot, offering a smile as the two continued to speak. Their conversation trailed on, and the two continued a pleasant conversation, learning about one another and discussing the town. Elliot was more than intrigued to learn about the farm and the work she'd done so far and her future plans, and Maria was curious to learn about his life as a writer and his current projects. Maria couldn't place her finger on it, yet somehow she found Elliot so easy to talk to. With most new people, she'd been more reserved, carefully selecting how she spoke, afraid to stammer or stumble over words from nervousness. Somewhere towards the end of the evening, Emily swung by to offer the pair beverages. Would you want another glass of that pomegranate wine? She asked Elliot with a cheerful smile. Oh, I never even asked if you wanted anything to drink, Maria. I'm so sorry. No, no, it, it's fine. Don't worry, Maria quickly said, assuring her that she didn't have to apologize. You shouldn't, I shouldn't have drinks sent either way. I'm too much of a lightweight, and the last thing I need is to wake up at six in the morning with a hangover. I'm going to have to decline as well, but thank you for the offer, Alia agreed, and hand, handing at Emily the now empty wine glass, which has been nursing for the last half hour. Emily nodded as she grasped the glass. Well, alrighty, you two have a good night and get home safely. You too, Maria called out as she walked away, before turning to look back at her new friend. Well, sadly, I should really get going. It's nearly eleven, she sighed pulling out her phone to check the time. I do suppose you're right. Would you perhaps like me to walk you home? He offered, gathering his notebook and pen into one hand. Maria shook her head as she stood up. No need. The town is more than safe, and I wouldn't want to be a burden. Besides, if you walk all the way to the farm and all the way back to the beach, you won't be home until well past midnight, maybe even one o'clock. Well, all right, but I can assure you that you wouldn't by any means be a burden upon me, friend. Elliot replied, giving her a genuine smile. Oh At this note, yeah, gentlemen, <laughs> yep, <laughs> silly little guy. At this notion, Maria found herself blushing, a red dusting her cheeks, which she hoped he wouldn't be able to see. Quickly, she cleared her throat and grabbed her wicker basket. I'll be seeing you around then, and good luck with your book. Best of luck with the farm as well. I hope you continue to have bountiful harvests, and I. I shit. I suppose if it means getting the chance to say hello again, I'll consider venturing into town more often, he suggested, his green eyes meeting her own. If her cheeks weren't red before, she could only assume that she there must have been tomato red. Oh, I guess or guess I'll look forward to that. Um bye. <laughs> Jeez. That that was me. <laughs> <laughs> she stammered, practically stumbling over her chair as she stepped away from the table. Elliot could only chuckle as she walked out, entirely flustered as she sped out of the salon entrance and began walking towards the town center, which would lead her back home. The nighttime air wasn't enough to cool her face. The mere fact that Elliot was willing to go out of his way just to see her made her feel bubbly and appreciated in a way she hadn't felt in a very long time. It wasn't until the cobblestone paths turned to dirt roads that she realized she had never even offered Elliot a greeting gift from her basket like she'd offered everyone else in the saloon. Guess it's not so bad, she thought, a smile grazing her lips. Just gives me an excuse to visit. Oh. Okay, I like this so far. It's really good setup so far. Yeah, not bad. Okay, I think we have enough time to do one more part. Okay. Alright. I'm really enjoying this. This is really good. Yeah. Probably the best written piece that we have yet yeah. Uh, read. Yeah, especially for Stardew Valley. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, I, st I still think like that heartbeat stuff was so funny. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> he got robbed. Funny. He got mugged and left in a bush. Like... I, I, I think I still say that to you when, like, you look down or something. Yeah. I'm like, did you get robbed? Thrown <laughs> into a bush. God. It, it's just so funny to say. It is. Yeah. All right. Egg-related events. All right. 
I'm guessing this is the the egg festival where they go around and I hope do so. The thing. Yeah, because that's first, and then they do the the spring dance. <gasps> you think okay. we're gonna ask Elliot to do the the, the flower dance? Oh, <laughs> I hope so. We have to. We. Got... <laughs> All right, God. but that's like future. We don't have to worry about that yet. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> it was mid spring, and the heavens had grazed Maria with a cooling spring sprinkle of rain. Water didn't pour down from the sky; instead, it drizzled down bringing a smile to the farmer's face as she leaned over the new, the newest harvest, thinking up the fully grown cauliflowers from her field. What the hell? <laughs> or, I thought this said onion. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> Orion, look at these. Aren't these just gorgeous? She explained, lifting one of the biggest cauliflowers and turned her heel to face who she's been speaking to. The person in question was Orion, her new cat. She received him just two days ago when Mar- Marnie swung by with him saddled into a blanket. M- Maria was very happy to accept the tomcat, admiring its steely blue eyes in contrast to his dark brown and black fur. Currently, Orion was sprouting out in the, ho- in the house's front porch, sunbathing in a spot which protected him from the light rainfall. Upon hearing his name, he being called he lifted his head just barely acknowledging maria's presence before rolling over ignoring her once more dude that sounds like my cat (laughs) i did that to her this morning i was like hey miller and she like poked her head up from where she was sleeping and then she went right back to sleep (laughs) (laughs) oh cats they're so nice (laughs) yep very nice. Thanks for the support, buddy, Maria sighed, hoisting the cauliflower into her basket to take to Pierre's shop. Majority of the time, she'd leave her earnings in the produce box at the edge of her farm to be retrieved at night, but she was saving up for an upgraded fishing rod that she wanted to purchase by the end of the day, so she'd go and sell them now. Rolling up her flannel sleeves, she grabbed both baskets full of fresh vegetables and lifted them up, shouting a goodbye to Orion over her shoulder before trudging down the dirt path and headed to into the town center. Two months ago, a walk like this while carrying at least 50 pounds would leave her feeling sore all over, but living on the farm and tending to the fields had garnered her some muscle mass. Nothing incredibly different at first glance, but she certainly noticed the toning her arms had gained. She noticed a slight loss of fat at her waist, which seemed slightly upsetting to her at first since she was quite the fan of her curves, but she figured that trading a little curvage for a little muscle wasn't the worst that could happen to her. After about ten minutes of walking, she made it to the town plaza, offering a smile to Cody, oh, sorry, Jody and Caroline as the two mothers passed her, no doubt having her daily gossip session. She, had also, she also saw Evelyn, the grandmother of the young man in town, tending to the flowers near the saloon. The elderly woman set down her watering pail and waved a, from, and waved a frailly hand, and all Maria could do was lift her basket of cauliflowers and widely grin, hoping the woman would understand her hands were too full to weigh back. When she heard Evelyn chuckle sweetly, she assumed she got the message, and continued on her trek to Pierre's. Upon standing in front of the, sh- the shop store, however, she came to a sudden revelation. With both, ha- both hands preoccupied with very heavy baskets, the rope handles of which were beginning to dig into her skin, and she knew that having to put them on the ground only to pick them up would again would, again would hurt. Well, isn't this a pleasant surprise? Maria quickly tilted her head back, a smile spreading on her face when she saw a familiar auburn-haired man walking down the stone path her way. Oh my god, he's here. It's him. It's, it's the guy. It's him. He's here. He, it's the boy. <laughs> <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. She and Elliot had crossed paths a handful of times since their first meeting in the saloon all those weeks ago. They happened upon one another in the forest while Maria had been foraging for spring onions to snack on, and she teasingly mocked the the disgust that Elliot weakly attempted to hide in the sight of the dirt-covered root vegetables. Their next meeting was at the beach while she was setting up crab pots that Willie had loaned her and the two managed to bond over their share of seafood. She made sure to note that his favorite meals were lobster and crab cakes. Maybe once she had a kitchen installed, she can cook it for either his birthday in autumn. 
She also attempted to keep up with her Friday visits to the saloon, both to socialize with other townsfolks and meet the occasional drink with Elliot and Leah. Elliot had happily introduced her to Leah, an artist who loved who lived in the Riverside Cabin south of Marty's ranch. Hi there, Elliot, she greeted him, struggling to get the words out as her arms finally began to feel the strain of the baskets were pulling on her body. Would you mind bringing, uh, grabbing the door for me? My hands are kind of full. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. She gasped as one of the basket handles snapped, but quickly maneuvered to lean the basket on her hip. Before she could react, a single cauliflower tumbled from the top of the pile, and she could only watch with a pained expression as it fell towards the ground. Quickly enough, Elliot had managed to lunge forward and grasp the vegetable, cradling it gently as he leaned back up. That was nearly a disaster. Luckily, we managed to save this cauliflower from its untimely stone demise, he said with a chuckle, offering a handout to help Maria with n the now-broken basket. No, it'll be real she funny. Was... <laughs> <laughs> if, like, you know, that whole scene plays out, like, the cauliflower mm -hmm. like, almost hits the ground, he's like, well, that was a close one, and then the basket breaks to the bottom, and they all... <laughs> God. I was thinking, like, he catches it. He was like, that would have sucked. And then just throws it. <laughs> like, yeah, like, touchdowns it on the floor. <laughs> God, yeah. Oh, field goal. She was more than happy to accept his offer, and she giggled, watching the look on his face once he realized just how heavy the produce was. How big is that oh, cauliflower? skinny boy. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. I mean, it's one. <laughs> I picked up cauliflower in the grocery store before. It's not that heavy to get one. Uh, well, maybe she gave him the heaviest cauliflower the world has ever seen. Oh, maybe she, like, you know how, like, if you grow them in a 3x3, three three, they can get, like, like a big thing of cauliflower? She just brought that. I did that. not know that. You didn't know that? No. If you, It's cauliflower, melons, and pumpkins. If you grow them three by three, there's a chance that it will grow into, Ooh. like, a big version. So I'm, like, okay. I'm just thinking that she did that, and she has this big-ass cauliflower, and she oh, put I it, like, so. the very top of the basket. <laughs> God. Oh, that would have been funny. It would. Now, with one free hand, she was able to grasp the door handle and push it open. A jungle announcing their presence to Pierre, who had been reading a book behind the counter. Hi there, Maria. Got a new harvest ring? He asked with a grin, and she knew how excited he was at the prospect of having fresh food on his shelves for customers. Yeah, so he could fucking sell what a dick. <laughs> yep. Dude, I hated him for the, um... You know how in fall you have, like, the, um, the showcase of all your farm stuff? Mm -hmm. I was so pissed when I was like, yo, he fucking stole all this shit from me. This is my shit that he's... <laughs> you can take it back. Those bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the stuff back. Wait, you can? Yes. What? You? I, I think so. Like, I think after, like, you win, you can just get it out. Yeah, yeah, but that's, like, your stuff that, like, you put in the thing. I'm talking about, like, all the produce I sell to him. He, oh, like, he, like, shows okay. It off as I get what own. you mean. And okay, I was like, yeah. wow, he has, like, a great, like, you have some competition. And I'm like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> he stole it from me. <laughs> that's my shit. <laughs> sure do. Oh. <laughs> another, another cauliflower harvest. I got about half of them on me right now, and another half is waiting for you in the produce box back at the farm tonight. She explained with a smile once she and Elliot got to the counter, settling down the baskets near the register. Oh, these would be perfect for the festival tomorrow. I need to call Gus and let her know that he'll be have more food to work with. Pierre replied, popping open the cash register and beginning getting, gathering the gold he'd pay back Maria with. She, however, was very confused at the mention of a festival. Festival? This is the first time I'm hearing about this, she wondered out loud, looking between Elliot and Pierre in the hopes of an answer. Ah, yes, the Egg Festival, held once a year every spring in Town Square. If my memory serves me right, last year was... What? <laughs> Vertible? Uh, well, Ver terrible buffet. Veritable. Veritable buffet prepared by Gus from the saloon, and I'd come for everyone to partake in. Though it was mostly a children's venture, and the town was adored top to bottom in festive pastel egg-related decor. 
the writer explained, tapping his fingers on his chin as he spoke. In so many words, In... yes. <laughs> so true. Pierre agreed, collecting the gold in a small coin stack and handing it over the counter to Maria to grab. And I kindly thank you for the produce stock. There's more where that came from, Maria grinned, happily grasping the bag and tossing it between her hands playfully. Now, if I could just buy, let's say, 30 cauliflower seeds? I'm planning on two more harvests before my prepping um, my farm for the summer crops. Two more harvests? I... <laughs> uh, yeah, like, damn. Take 13 da- like, those take 13 days. Yeah, you do not have time for that shit, girl. No, your crops are going to be dead by the time summer rolls around. <laughs> and I'm going to laugh Dude, just that, a little bit. That happened to me when I started yeah. playing. Like, I finally Me got, too. like, the, the hang of it, and I'm like, okay, finally, mm-hmm. I got the whole, like, thing brought down. That I bought a mm-hmm. bunch of seeds, like, two days yeah. before the season ended, and they were all dead. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah, I did that shit many times. Yeah, because I, th- I thought Much it was, heartache. like, three months for each season, but it ended yep. up being one month. <laughs> it is 28 days. Yeah, that was, that was mistake number one. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Stardew. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. After collecting her seeds from the shelves and paying Pierre back, she stood by the door and watched Elliot do his bi-weekly grocery shopping, picking up essentials and food to stock in his seaside cabin. Within minutes, the two were out of the store, walking side by side through the town square. Maria had managed to convince him to let her carry some of the groceries, so now uh, in one hand she carried a box of tea bags, and in the other was a box. It was a bag which held cartons of cream, packets of sugar, and honey imported from some big-name brand in Zuzu City. I didn't know you were a tea fan, Maria hummed, lifting the box to inspect its contents. Green tea blended with peppermint. Hmm, no wonder you no wonder you always smell minty. Why the fuck you smelling them? <laughs> yeah, you getting a sniff in? Like, what are you no, doing? Uh, same. <laughs> I, I can't lie. I think, I think he would smell fishy, though. Yeah, because he's always, yeah, because he lives on a beach. Exactly. He loves like seafood. that man. He's smelly. I love the way you said smelly. (laughs) (laughs) Elliot laughed at this, glancing down at Maria as as he carried his share of the groceries. I I assume I shall take that as a compliment? But yes, tea had been a staple in my daily life since childhood. My mother was a tea fanatic, so it made sense that this projected on her own child. You're an only child? Maria explained loudly, nearly yelling at the question out loud. Oh, I'm so jealous. Elliot brow frowned as the writer mulled over the statement. I do not believe that the life of an only child contains much for one to be envious of. Oh yeah? Try having six siblings, Maria <laughs> replied in, in a deadpan. At this, she nearly choked wide-eyed. Six siblings? How did you ever survive? Maria giggled as... as fuck. Maria giggled, <laughs> amused by his tone. I spent a lot of time fighting the three older ones and helped raise the three younger ones. I and smacked down in the middle. One older sister, two older brothers, a pair of twin sisters, and the youngest is my baby brother. Well, he's 12, but I can still call him a baby. True. Just a little baby. Just a little baby bitch. <laughs> I'm the baby. I can't speak. I'm a middle child. I get no love. Uh. <laughs> I get like, you, uh, I was a trend at one point on TikTok. It was, mm-hmm. I don't even think it was a trend. It was just like a fact. It was like yeah. uh, this parent giving like the younger sibling and the older sibling like little treats. And like mm-hmm. they gave back like the leftovers. And then the parent yeah. put the leftovers together and gave it to the middle child. Oh. And I'm like, yep, that's it. That That's <laughs> accurate (laughs) yeah it is (laughs) did nothing Uh, in this house (laughs) yeah again i'm the baby so i can't speak (laughs) bitch since you're like the youngest you probably got everything (laughs) um kinda i think it was shared between uh me and my sister because it's just us two oh okay so it uh we take turns (laughs) <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Could I perhaps get insight on the life of a middle child? Elliot asked curiously. <laughs> well, we were just talking about it. Weren't you listening? I can uh, tell you right now, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Mid. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the point of the middle. It stands exactly. for mid. <laughs> exactly. There's a reason middle why child? It's there. No, mid child. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm got forever. Instead of saying that I was the middle child, I'm going to call myself the mid child. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was mid. <laughs> it was mid. <laughs> middle child? No, the other one. <laughs> the, the forgotten one. Yeah. You know, the, the, that one. <laughs> oh, God. Elliot asked curiously once the two set foot on the bridge which connected the town center to the beach. Maria pursed her lips, turning her gaze away from him to glance down at the river, the trickling water momentarily distracting her as she got lost in memories. My life, hmm? Well, a lot of time being forgotten about and only being acknowledged when I was needed. Once the twins were born, I stopped getting the attention I needed as a child. And all my accomplishments were overshadowed by those of the older three. And my whole life, I've been compared to all of them. Preach it, bitch! The longer... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bars. <laughs> no, let him cook! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yo, Maria... I mean, she, yeah, bars. She's spitting. So true, even. The longer her sentence trailed on, the more bitter her tone began, an edge creeping in. She stopped herself, however, both physically and from speaking. With a sigh, she dropped her shoulders and leaned against the bridge's brick wall, cursing her emotions for getting the better of her. She could feel tears pricking at the corners of her eyes and willed them back, refusing to let Elliot see her cry. Good. I don't want to read a crying scene. Me either. <laughs> I just don't feel like it. All right. Let me let me continue then. <laughs> Maria, Elliot mumbled, and she hated the way all of her mental function seemed to screech to a halt just by hearing her name spill off his tongue so easily. Simp. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 she lifted her gaze slowly to meet his her heart aching just a bit seeing the genuine concern in his eyes i i didn't mean to to cause you any distress with my questions if you wish to ease the conversation i gladly switch the topic in all these weeks of knowing you i would never seen you so pained the writer chose his words carefully, and Maria s smiled weakly at him. It's fine. You're fine. No worries. Let's just get these groceries back to your place, yeah? And we can check and see if my crab pots caught anything good today, too. Elliot nodded and allowed her to walk ahead. And though the writer still had questions and concerns he wanted to voice, he shuffled through the thoughts for now. Another time, he thought, as he and Maria walked to the bridge onto the all-too-familiar Sandy Shores. Sandy Shores, just like in GTA. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I don't think next... I've ever played GTA. <laughs> <laughs> I have played, like, the main story mode, like, maybe, like, four times now. <laughs> I, I... So... I saw I saw Danny Gonzalez play it, and then he like randomly mm -hmm. stopped playing games. I'm like, oh man, I was enjoying the gaming channel. Yeah, never upload sad. ever again. Damn. The next day, Maria found herself in awe at the work that had been done overnight to decorate the town square for the annual egg festival. Pastel egg themed garlands hanging in the trees and on the buildings. The street lamps had been wrapped in ribbons, and she could already spy brightly colored eggs that had been hidden in bushes and gardens for the eventual egg hunt. She strolled into town wearing a pink blouse with sleeves that cut off at her elbows and slim-fit jeans that she'd tucked into her working boots. Her curly brunette locks had been tied up in a loose ponytail, and a pink ribbon she'd, she'd had lying around in her moving boxes was wrapped around her hair, which seemed to tie the outfit together nicely. After swinging by Pierre's stand and being enticed into buying strawberry seeds, she wandered over to what appeared to be a buffet set up on three long tables. Every single type of egg-based meal Maria could imagine was up for grabs. 
boiled eggs, fried eggs, deviled eggs, egg salads, egg on rice, egg rolls. Her mouth was salivating at the sight. Damn, I wish I can do this. Like, um, like in the game, <laughs> just a slight setting to just go up to the table and just pick one meal, you know? I would love that. Go on, farmer. Grab a plate and get your fill. Gus invited her over with a grin, and she did just that, piling her plate high with one of every item there was. She had a brief conversation with Marnie and Shane with all the eggs they supplied for the festival, and the latter seemed un Fuck, what does that say? Uncharacteristically happy for the occasion. Yeah. I can I deserve a medal for that. <laughs> for such you a did long it well. Word. Dude, just look how long that word is. That's four. That's like the as long as those like top ones. <laughs> it's several. It's several syllables. Several. I'm counting them on my fingers. Uncharacteristically, that is a whole eight syllable word. Damn. After learning he had quite the hand in raising Marnie's chickens, she understood his change in mood, finding the the insight into his life interesting considering he shut her down every time she attempted to chat him up in the saloon. She made a point to avoid the fruit punch bowl after a side comet Pam made, leading her to believe it had been spiked. <laughs> Jeez. No, Pam would do that. Let's be honest. Yeah, she would. She absolutely would. She would, like, she'll walk over to it, take, like, a little sip, and she's like, this shit needs to be stronger, and, like, pour, like, a shit ton of bop in there. <laughs> I mean, I, I fuck with that. Yeah, fuck yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I fuck with that. When she was satisfied with all the food she grabbed, she walked towards an area where circular tables and seats had been set up, realizing Leah had been waving her down to sit with her and Elliot. Did you leave anything at the buffet? Leah teased, pointing out the farmer's plate as she took a seat, setting her food down gently on the table. It's free food, and we don't get a lot of opportunities to feast like this, Maria replied, sticking her tongue out before digging her fork into some very tasty-looking scrambled eggs. I grabbed as much as I could. Feel free to pick off my plate. The three held an idle conversation as they shared the food Maria had gathered, discussing various topics. Leah's current project, Elliot's plan, or lack thereof, for his book, <laughs> and Maria's ideas on farm formatting and the coop she wanted to buy by Spring's End. Three separate times Maria had turned her head only for her eyes to meet the familiar green ones, and for Elliot to quickly avert his gaze. She bit the inside of his cheek, wondering what must have been going through the writer's mind, but before she could ask, her thoughts were interrupted by Lewis speaking up to make an announcement. The egg hunt will be starting in five minutes. All who want to participate must come up and grab an egg basket. This is an all-ages competition. Not only children have to participate. At this, Maria raised a brow before looking back at her two friends with a small grin on her lips. Why do I kind of want to do the egg hunt? <laughs> I say go for it. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I get it. I would do that shit, too. Do that Like, so if I fun. were, like, actual there. Yeah. I say go for it. It's not just the kids that play. Plus, there's some kind of prize at the end, Leah suggested with a shrug. Sipping on her water as they watched Jess and Vincent run up to collect their baskets from the mayor. I mean, yeah, but if I win, I'd feel bad. Not like, like, don't, don't I kind of have advantage over the kids? Maria mumbled, tapping her foot as she thought it over. Jess and Vincent lost to Abigail last year, but they were more than fine with the outcome. I believe the two were mostly excited over how many eggs they had collected and where they found them. Elliot offered, and just as he said this, Abigail had walked up to the Mayor Lewis to retrieve her egg basket as well. Fuck Abigail, she's so... <laughs> she you don't like talks. Abigail? No, I do. It's this stupid egg part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like letting her win the egg hunt. <laughs> yeah, I, I suck at the egg hunt so bad. Dude, you you know if like if that like Abigail would be at the 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 egg hunt and he like all right mm -hmm. ready go and she'll be pushing the children out of the way. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> She's like, move, bitch. <laughs> Shove the kids to the hunt. ground. <laughs> Putting God. a few more seconds of thought into it, Maria grinned wickedly as she grabbed an egg an egg roll and stood up from the table. All right, I'll do it, but don't be surprised if I wipe the floor with the, with the competition. She smirked before taking a bite at, from the roll and practically bounded over to Lois with childlike excitement. Such confidence, Elliot called out 
after her. He and Leah laughed as they watched the farmer grab a basket and give the two a devilish look. I, uh, hmm. I don't trust her ability to find the eggs against Abigail. Oh, oh, uh, that's you, just my you, hunch. You think like she'll be like one short, and she's like, "God damn it!" and like throws her like, basket on the ground. <laughs> that has to happen. That has to happen. Okay, let's see. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> Once the egg hunt began, all six hunters were off, and Elliot had managed to watch Maria sprint towards the southern bridge in, in search of painted eggs. So what's with you and all the staring today? He quickly turned his head, only to see Leah's curious face as she arched a brow to look over at him. Whatever do you mean, he replied, trying to play off her question. <laughs> Don't think I haven't noticed all the looking you've been doing at Maria. What's up with you, hmm? She pushed, crossing her arms and leaning over the table. Elliot sighed, running a hand through his hair to push it back. Yesterday, Maria and I were talking. She was gracious enough to assist me in carrying my groceries home from Pierre's. We approached the topic of family and... Well, she wasn't exactly fond of her life experiences. I believe I encroached on a sensitive topic, and I want to find a good way to apologize. I would never in my life seek to make her uncomfortable, and I'd very much like her to know she can have faith in me and seek out, seek me out if she ever needs any help, or if someone, or someone to merely speak with, he explained, pursing his lips. In the background of their conversation, Lewis shouted that it was the midway point of the egg hunt. Well, tell her, Leah replied, sh shrugging her shoulders. Pardon? Elliot frowned his brow. Well, what you just said to me, tell her that. Easy. Leah continued, picking at the leftovers what had previously been an egg salad. It's not that simple. I'm not sure that Maria and I are close enough, close enough bond for me to be seen as a confident in her eyes. Elliot, Elliot mused. Vaguely listening to the excited giggles of children in the background, he assumed Jazz and Vincent must have discovered a new egg. Leah rolled her eyes and leaned back in her chair. Well, if you never talk to her about these things, you're never going to get to that point. Yes, he muttered. Yes, I suppose you're right. The sudden thrilled noise of the whistle made the two jump, turning their attention back towards the mare. Hunt's over. All hunters must return to tally their eggs. Time skip. Maria couldn't wipe the grin off of her face, even if she wanted to, as she walked back over to Elliot and Leah, spot sporting an oddly appropriate straw hat that had been her gift for winning and swinging a basket of ten delicately painted eggs. I don't buy it. I do not buy that she beat Abigail. I just, no, I don't believe it. That's just my belief. <laughs> you think she, like, stole it from her? Like, she walked I over hope... to Abigail's, like, egg basket and just, like, took yeah. an egg? <laughs> She cheated. Yeah. Like, the, Abigail is the goat, and she's unbeatable, so I I don't believe it. How do I look? She asked playfully, striking a pose when she stood in front of her friends. Like a farmer, Leah teased, making Maria stick her tongue out once more. I believe a celebration of my victory is in order, she announced with a smile, tipping her hat to block out the sun. How about we grab some drinks and head back to the farm? I don't think I've had either of you over yet. My house isn't much for now, but I've got movies and a decent television signal. And a cat. That sounds lovely, Elliot replied, giving Maria a sweet smile, which caused a faint blush to dust her cheeks. Great, but first, there's a giant pink rabbit plush at Pierre's stand that's calling my name, and I have to get it. She giggled before picking up the trash that had been left over from her small feast. Meet me in the northwest road and we'll start walking. Unknown to her, a pair of green eyes curiously watched her skip away towards Pierre. Upon hearing Leah's laughter besides him, however, Elliot stopped his staring to face his friend. What? he questioned, confused by her amusement. Either you really want to talk to her about yesterday, or you're starting to get a teeny tiny crush on the farmer, she teased with a grin, standing up from the table. The mere suggestion made Elliot's cheeks darken to a shade of red, and before he could refute the claim, Leah had walked away towards the meet-up point, leaving the writer to sit there and dwell on the idea. Yo, you have to. Confess! <laughs> <laughs> it has to happen, buddy. Dude, this there is are... such a good book. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I am in love with this, like, writer and everything now. Yeah, their writing style is pretty nice. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I, I am loving this book. <laughs> it's uh, definitely the best of what we have read so far. Absolutely.
And this is like only three parts in and it's really establishing like our character well, their backstory, what Elliot yeah, the like the pacing. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't like diving like right off the deep end, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yeah. I don't the, know about the you. The pacing is good and the writing style is good. Um, yeah. well, for me, I have, um, I'm, I can be a bit of a writing snob, so my <laughs> standards are kind of high, um, but this is definitely the best thing we've read so far, and it, the pacing is good, the characterization is nice, um, dialogue is good, so, uh, overall, uh, it's, it's pretty promising. Okay, uh, did you see any of this on AO3? Is it, like, uh, is it, like, mean? copy and pasted? Um, I would assume so. Okay. That's usually when a, a fic is cross-posted across sites, it's just the exact same fic, but on different, um, platforms. So. Okay. I didn't know if it would be, like, anything... Because I don't read on AO3, so I didn't know how yeah. different it would be from an AO3 mm -hmm. format to a Wattpad format. Well, um, AO3 does still have, like, italics and bold and stuff like that. So, um, it wouldn't be all that different really it would just be like a different site and that would be it oh, they God, still have God. like chapters and all that so well i don't know about you but we're definitely mm -hmm. going to be reading more of this <laughs> like in more okay. parts yeah. this would be awesome i'm good with that any any final words about this uh fan fiction um it's uh it's pretty good so far it, i'm excited to see where it goes me too. I'm a simp for Elliot, so <laughs> this is my kind yeah. of book. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate him. I've never, like, been super, super duper into him, so maybe this will, like, change my brain chemistry. We'll just have to see. Dude, we gotta find one that's, like, just like this, but Harvey. <laughs> well, I there's definitely shit out there. I can see if I have anything in my, like, marked for later list. Yeah. I, s I swear Harvey does not get as much love as all the other ones. No, he doesn't. No. He's probably the least appreciated out of everybody. Yeah, you fuckers need to stop sleeping on Harvey. He's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. There's For a real. reason why he's my second husband in my other four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can look for some, some Harvey stuff. Alrighty. If we find a good one, we'll definitely read parts of it. Mm -hmm. but for now... it'll it'll hard it'll be hard for me to like not like read the whole thing just for like quality control yeah and just like judge it based off of like the tags and the summary and stuff but we we will find something yeah I don't by mind god skimming. we will find it yeah i don't mind skimming the first chapter to at least see yeah. like what the hell i'm gonna get myself into yeah definitely <laughs> and just get a feel for the author's writing style and see if that's something that we give a shit about yeah because i know for that so. like zosin reading like lemon thing that you said i was like yeah, All right, was let me just... yeah i was like oh my god we're gonna have to <laughs> try our best yeah. with this one <laughs> yeah yeah so i don't mind skimming like that as long as you don't like jump all the way to the last chapter and everything yeah definitely all right, so this this has been the Wattpad book club. Uh, we are definitely going <laughs> to do some more of this Elliot one. Yeah. This is fantastic. I highly recommend you read this for yourself or on Wattpad or AO3. I'll have the book linked down below so you can read, like, go through the uh, author and see their other works as well. I'm bl it's the same username right now, AO3. Um, ugh, let me check. <laughs> okay. I just closed out the tab where I was looking at it. My bad. It'll be linked below no, you're good. for the AO3 and the Wattpad one. So, if yeah, whatever it's, format it's you like username. using. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll it's have a different both username. Linked. Link them both, yeah. Okay. The Wattpad one and the AO3 one will be linked. Just, just for your format pleasure. But <laughs> this has been Phoenix and Coda, and we'll yeah. see you guys next time for another reading. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.